Hi everyone from Lolo, Montana, Dunrovin Ranch on this glorious fall afternoon. Um, as uh, happens every time the seasons change, my wonderful friend Hobie Hare Hi, comes everybody. to visit Hi. and to help us mark the seasonal changes. Uh, uh, Hobie, I, I really look forward to your coming because, uh, you know, it, it, it takes a moment for all of us to sort of step back and pause mm -hmm. and absorb what is happening. You know, you get too engaged in it. You mm -hmm. don't just appreciate what's taking place before your eyes. You're right, and it's uh, amazing. We've had this glorious Indian summer for the past week or so, and it looks like it's going to continue for another week. So we are blessed right now. We are, uh, yes, the 60 degree weather in western Montana, which is a little bit uh, warmer than usual. Mm -hmm. But I understand that um, you and Eric were out earlier in the month, the first of the month, mm -hmm. out doing some kayaking and uh, fell upon a, a little family group. Yeah, we did. We were traveling um, near uh, Trout Creek, Montana, which is uh, on Knoxon Reservoir, the part of the Clark Fork River that was dammed. It's west of here, west almost of here. to the Idaho border. Yeah, really close to Idaho. And yeah. we, we took one night away, stayed in a cabin. Then the next day, we were kind of wondering, oh, no, is the weather going to be crappy or not? But it became really nice, about 55, 60 degrees. And we were paddling across one of the arms of the reservoir, and we see these furry brown heads just kind of going like this. And at first we thought they were muskrats or beavers, but they turned out to be a family of otters. Oh, that's really a, uh, a lucky sighting. It was, and uh, we watched them for about an hour. I should probably more correctly say they watched us for an hour, because <laughs> they would just disappear 50 feet in front of the boat, in front of the kayaks, and then they'd reappear, and they were just having a grand old time and enjoying that sunny day, too. That's fabulous. Tell me a little something about river otters. Um, they have kits. Yes. And how big are their litters? Uh, I'm guessing uh, anywhere between two and six. Okay. Um, that probably is a handful right there. Okay. So pretty energetic. And uh, were the kits with them at that time? Um, we saw at least one, maybe oh. two. Okay. But um, let's see, it was first of October, so I'm guessing those kits were nearly adult size, but a little bit smaller. Right. So they were dispersing at that point in time anyway. Mm -hmm. So this could have been the, the, the last to leave home. Could be. And I know females will probably stay with the pod but uh, for a while, but I'm thinking like with a lot of other wild animals, um, there could be some competition down the road. So maybe um, females or males that want to start their own families have to leave and, yeah. you know, go find somebody new to hang with. Yeah. yeah. Well, what a wonderful, uh, fortuitous uh, opportunity. Yes. I've only seen river otters two or three times in my life. They're just a real treat. They're wonderful. The same day we saw uh, great blue herons, we saw um, sandhill cranes, we saw eagles. And by the way, on September 30th, I saw we saw an osprey right at Trout Creek. And I kept thinking, that's kind of late. But yeah. we were thrilled to see one last osprey in Big Sky Country before the, October. Yeah. yeah, it could have been somebody migrating through. It could have been somebody coming yeah. south. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I saw one down by the river about that time, mm -hmm. and it wasn't one of ours. Um, so, uh, you know, th this is a big flyway. So, the uh, Osprey go all the way to uh, Alaska. Mm -hmm. But this particular fall, for me, has been um, a really interesting one because of the mountain that I'm looking at, you are not looking at, uh, you out there, but you commonly do. Uh, on, uh, during sunsets and during sunrises, you often turn the web cameras towards Lolo Peak. And if you will remember, it was a year ago that Lolo Peak burned. Oh, yeah. And so this was the experience the seasons with the new Lolo Peak. Mm -hmm. And um, I have found myself being just tickled pink to see little spots of tamarack. The tamarack are uh, coniferous deciduous trees. And um, deciduous means they le lose their leaves, and uh, coniferous means they have cones, so they're not losing their leaves, they're losing their needles. Yeah. And they are a hallmark of Montana, mm -hmm. western larch. And uh, I, as I'm looking at the camera, behind the camera, I'm seeing this little V. Do you see in the sunlight? The I little do. V? It's beautiful. Uh, yes. Yeah. Of, of uh, tamarack. And, and my heart is full to know that there are parts of the mountain that were not burned, mm -hmm. and there's going to be this wonderful mosaic of um, old timber and new timber and new life and, 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's just going to be really fun to watch. But this is the first fall, and I, I didn't know what to expect because uh, this is one of my favorite views, of course. Mm -hmm. But we've been having a fabulous fall, um, although I've been curious about the colors in the, in the leaves. Some years you have vivid uh, bright oranges in the cottonwoods and other mm -hmm. years it gets a little bit more brown mm -hmm. and this is one of those brown years do you know anything about what causes the difference is it moisture is it the time of frost what is it i'm not sure but i've noticed the same thing like cottonwoods along the clark fork yeah. in downtown missoula tend yeah. to be more brown this year yeah our carraganas have been more dull uh, yeah. they're not native but still and then our sumacs are traditionally vibrant vivid. colors every year yeah amazingly vivid yeah yeah i was just curious i'm going to have to look that up if i do i'm going to put something on the web if i find out what it is that determines how vivid the fall colors are but of course that is what fall is all about are, are the, the fall colors when the leaves take center stage as opposed to the flowers and the blossoms right and um you know, in preparing for this, uh, both Hobie and I have, have been looking into some poems. Uh, we've been enjoying marking the changes of the season with poems. And I find, found myself uh, reading a number of autumn poems, mm -hmm. which really led me to, under, uh, to, be, to think about the emotional aspects of fall. And I, I wondered if, um, if you share what I have been thinking um, uh, as the emotional aspects of fall, and that is, the, you know, with spring, the colors foretell of warm summers and of easy, when the summertime when the living is easy. Winter is, is associated with death and difficulty. And so in, in some ways, in many of the poems that, that I read and some that I will read today, really um, try to capture that beautiful little ephemeral aspects of fall mm -hmm. that you part of your enjoyment of these warm days <coughs> and these golden colors is your knowledge that it it will pass quickly the ephemeral aspects indeed <laughs> yes and it and it sort of it 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 takes you back to some of the statements of um understanding uh, you know, you can't understand the happiness in life, uh, life unless you understand the sadness. But mm -hmm. those are, one complements the other. And the, the, the fact that the plants die for the winter, to, uh, to come back, thank goodness, mm -hmm. every year. But there's this, this, this death period every year. Mm -hmm. And that, our emotions kind of go with that. That, 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 that fall brings this mixture of emotions that is both happy and sad and and melancholy and yet there that these these days are really precious almost more precious than the spring days because in the spring you know they're only going to get better and in in, mm -hmm. in fall you know you're going to lose them right and i just think about it too how for a lot of people um, in the northern hemisphere right now it can be a little bit of a groggy start in the morning because it's darker at our whatever our typical wake up time is and it right. feels like it takes a while for the sun to go over the house and warm up the backyard and dry the clothes on the clothes sorry dry the clothes on the clothesline or for the cat to want to go outside and play because she's waiting it for it to hit 50 degrees or more right to find her outside bed and right. it just seems like yeah every day it's like this quickening almost like a reverse quickening of what we see in the spring yes the yes quickening towards stasis or um Hibernation and just not right. stagnation, but just it's things sleeping. happening more underground rather than obvious to us. Yes, yeah, and and that's not that 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 the winter and the darkness don't have their own delights. They do, mm -hmm. but I think it's this it's us wanting to capture these last few warm rays mm -hmm. that make them even sweeter than yeah. than at other times of the year. Yeah, and can I share with you one poem that comes to my mind that's yes. not here, but I I came across it about a couple weeks ago. Yes, I forget the author. Um, but it said that winter is an etching, spring is a watercolor, um, summer is a oil painting, and autumn is a mosaic of them all. And I forget who said that, but I just love that because it just makes me think about the seasons through art and art through seasons. Yeah. Etching, oil, so, um, watercolor, oil painting, and then uh, a mosaic. 
Yes. Yeah. And I, I, I do think you do experience them all in autumn, don't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, as we were talking just before the, the, the camera came on, we had a little snippet of winter yeah. in about, about uh, three weeks ago. Uh -huh. and, we, and all of us sort of held our breath thinking, oh no, this could be the real beginning. And, and we're all just sort of anxious. And so there's that mosaic where winter sort of pushes in at the end of summer. And, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it really is. It's, it's, a, it's a, the time of changing and it can go either way. <laughs> mm -hmm. As it does for anywhere on the planet, I believe. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, my mind has been on these uh, beautiful autumn colors, and so I'm, I actually uh, selected four short poems, mm -hmm. and they all kind of follow the same theme, the ephemeral nature of, of autumn and the falling leaves, and, and uh, how, how it, it's, it's here briefly, and you have to capture it while it's here. You have to enjoy these days. You, you can't stay indoors today thinking you'll have it again tomorrow because you might not. No. This, could, this one could be the last. <laughs> so one of the first poems I'd like to read is by Robert Faust. And it's very short, but it's beautiful. And the, 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 the title is Nothing Gold Can Stay. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest heel, hue to hold. Her early leaf's a flower, but only so for an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. It's awesome. Isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and it really does capture that nothing gold can stay. It's, it's here for a moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like the flower. Just like the flower. Yeah. yeah like the leaves that become flowers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then I have another short one by another famous author. This one is by uh, Robert Louis, Louis Stevenson, famous American author. Mm -hmm. In the other gardens and all up in the vale, from the autumn bonfires see the smoke trail. Pleasant summer over, all the summer flowers, the red fire blazes, the gray smoke towers. Sing a song of seasons, something bright in all flowers in the summer fires in the fall autumn fires sounds like last summer and fall yes, yes <laughs> i'm glad it it's different this year i'm glad it's different this year too yeah. but that is the time when people start building their fires in their in their uh, homes again mm -hmm. you know, the smoke curls out yeah, yeah. do you want to intercede with a poem sure um, how about if I read my short one, I'll save the other one for, for a little bit. Okay. okay. So very short, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Okay. And uh, it's more of a quote, I believe. It might have come from a poem, but um, here we go. Life starts all over again when it gets crisp in the fall. And I love that. I do too. It gets crisp and everybody's got a... It's really true. And I'll, t I'll say, t I've always told everybody that I've had these energetic summers, they're in good shape, and then... They're sort of tired from the heat, mm -hmm. and then that crisp air comes, and boom, the energy just surges back, and you, you want to get out there and, and enjoy that crisp air and fill your mm -hmm. lungs with it. Uh, uh, you know, fall football days and fall hikes and fall mm -hmm. horseback rides. Great raking, time of the year. Or raking leaves, whatever raking keeps you warm. Leaves, whatever mm -hmm. keeps you warm, exactly. Okay, this is another poem from uh, Catherine Towers, uh, <coughs> Wim me, Wood. And I've chosen this because I think it's a, a good, um, uh, what do you call it, precursor to the next poem that I'm going to read, which is uh, by William Shakespeare. It's his sonnet number 73. Um, but this is uh, <coughs> Wimwood by Catherine Towers. Into the coppery halls of beech and intricate oak, to be close, close to the trees as they whisper together, let fall their leaves, and we die for the winter. Mm -hmm. Again, it's that winter bringing the death of the of the the plants. Not really a death, but a hibernation, a, a pulling in, a, mm -hmm. a, a living underground as opposed to living above ground. Mm -hmm. That is um, so much a part of this season. And then I will uh, read um, Sh William Shakespeare. And uh, hold on with me. I'm not a, a Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's right. Theater um, 
uh, thespian, but um, I will try, give it my best. I do like this one. That time of year thou mayst in me behold, when yellow leaves, or none, or few do hang, upon those boughs which shake against the coal, cold, bare rune choirs where late the sweet birds sang. In me thou seest the twilight of such day, as after sunset fadeth in the west, which by and by black night doth take away, death's second self that seals up all the rest. In me thou seest the glowing of such a fire, that on the ashes of his youth doth lie, as the deathbed whereupon it must expire, consumed by that which it is nourished by. This thou perceivest, which makes thy love more strong, to love that well which thou must leave ere long. I like it. Oh, those last two lines. This thou perceivest, which makes love more strong, to love that well which thou must leave ere long. That really captures fall to me. Mm -hmm. Loving it so much and knowing that it will fade quickly or, or, or gradually, and you don't know which. Always holds surprises. We don't. I mean, I think it was the last day of September is when we had the sleet and snow in town. Right. And I think we've gotten as cold as the low, very low 20s. Yes. And we've had snow here. We've had snow. And um, usually around Halloween, there's a good snowstorm to yep. change the trick-or-treaters' costumes. <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> you know? That's um, right. And then we set the clocks back before you know it in November. And bam, yep. deep into fall. And here comes winter. Here comes winter. Yeah. yeah. So well, go, ahead. go ahead. Okay, this is by W.S. Mer Merwin, M -E -W, sorry, M-E-R-W-I-N, so W.S. Merwin, The Love of October. And I found this this week, and I just really love it. A child looking at ruins grows younger but cold and wants to wake to a new name. I have been younger in October than in all the months of spring. Walnut in May leaves the color of shoulders at the end of summer, a month that has been to the mountain and become light there. The long grass lies pointing up hills, even in death for a reason that none of us knows. And the wren laughs in the early shade now. Come again, shining glance in your good time, naked air, late morning. My love is for lightness, of touch foot weather. The day is yet one more yellow leaf. And without turning I kiss the light by an old well on the last of the month, gathering wild rose hips in the sun. Oh, that's very beautiful. I love that. Just it's, it's, it's like all about, to me, savoring every single day and moment and just knowing it could be the last of something until next year. Yes, that fleeting. And knowing it's coming back. So yes. We can just remember that. Yes, yeah. yes. Beautiful time of year. Beautiful time to gather with your friends. Beautiful time to be thinking thoughts of each other and, uh, you know, just savoring what life has to offer us. I have to say that on this particular day, I am so enjoying the view in front of me. The horses, you can see the sun behind them. Mm -hmm. The young girls are getting their horses ready for a horseback ride, and it definitely is an autumn day to savor. I also wanted to uh, let you all know that we are having a Halloween celebration. Our celebrations for Halloween have been... Uh, 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 rescheduled in the past because we just didn't have the staff to support them but we do this year so on October 30th 31st uh, we will have our Halloween celebration from 4 until 7 and any child who shows up in a costume is welcome to uh, go riding with us and we will have some games and some treats and we hope to have a big crowd it's fun Hope you have nice weather also. I hope we do too, but regardless, we hold it. <laughs> That's great. That's good. And what are you going to be this year? Oh, I'm always a witch of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe yeah, that. But, I, I think it's my alter ego is some sort of witch. I've always okay. loved the, the evil characters in the, the Disney uh, uh -huh. films. My sons will attest to that. <laughs> Ursula and, and, you know, the, the women of uh, Dalma 101 Dalmatians. Oh, Cruella de Vil. Cruella de Vil. Yeah, she was a mean one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I always would identify with those gals. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's it for us today. And yeah. thank you for joining us again. Thank you. Well, that's we always been really awesome. Appreciate yeah, you it. Bet. And we'll see you again in winter. In December, bring, but, yeah. Yes, as, we, as winter finally officially arrives. We'll be and here. And we'll see all of you then. And thank you so very much for coming and joining us. 
us and sharing this most pleasant sunny afternoon. Yeah, thank you, and everybody have a great okay. night, a great evening, and a wonderful fall season, and we'll see you in December together. Thank you. Goodbye. Take care.